Welcome back to Zero Mile ADV, True Beginner's Guide to Adventure Motorcycling. If you've made it this far, about two seconds of the video, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the like button if you like this series on building a motorcycle apparel company when I know nothing about the apparel industry and basically trying to go from concept to reality. What is this week's update? This week is all about, again, I think the struggles of being a no-name brand. There's a list a mile long of things I need to do in order to make this thing financially viable, because at the end of the day, I can spend a lot of money on it, but if nobody's interested in the product, it won't sell. And you have to have somebody to help you produce those goods. One setback is that I don't want this to be like a lot of other companies you might see out there. Like if, you're, if you have an Instagram account or even a Facebook account, I'm sure, basically the same company <laughs> so but if you have one of those accounts you probably get bombarded with a lot of these kind of like alibaba white label clothing brands for a lot of, there's a lot of them in motorcycle apparel i actually think that yammy noob guy kind of did a whole video on like just the cheap knockoff motorcycle apparel companies out there and you know you see them in skiing you see them in snowboarding all that there's a lot of these companies you know honestly not that there's anything wrong with it because some of these garments are actually you know, they're just generic, but they're produced really well. They can be produced decently well. And if it can save you a few bucks and somebody can feel like they have a brand, it's easier to do. And, you know, if you're buying the product and you like it, then I, yeah, no, no qualms. But that's just not what I want to do, right? I, I have, there's, I, you know, there's two big, I don't want to even really call them competitors because they're just different. They have different styling and different visions. But if you look at like the Climbs and the Moscow Motors of the world, it's a really quality apparel. And, you know, we don't want, if you're going to stand up and be able to stand in the same marketplace of those brands, we just can't have the whole Alibaba thing. So with that, some of the samples that we got that I saw last week, and again, this is another learning process, right? Where you're going through this journey and you have this vision and this brand that you want to bring to market. In this initial sampling phase is a real learning process for me because you're just building samples to see what the manufacturer can produce not styled to what you actually want to make so they're not actually producing your garment yet they're just showing you a sample of something similar to see if the quality is there to meet you know if you then provide them with the styling and the materials they can actually produce it correctly and one item that we got um, again it just had this feeling of like it was rushed and they it just felt like an alibaba white label thing and i'm like that is not on brand at all it's awful however after the call, I had to take a step back. Well, again, it's like, it's just if the garment is good, like here's a garment they can produce. If that quality is good, we can then change the styling of that garment to meet our needs and it could be really good. So initially I was really thrown off, a little bit of a mental hurdle there, but I just have to realize that it is about seeing if they can actually produce something and then you can modify it to meet your styling. So the next phase, is the next hurdle is there's a manufacturer that's a larger manufacturer and they, my essentially manufacturing lead, he, I'm not sure what that's the right term, manufacturing lead. I'm gonna go with that because again, I don't know anything like what the job titles are. I should ask him this week like what his job title would be so I could actually reference that properly. But my manufacturing lead, he really likes them. He's really impressed with the quality of the garments. They are also willing to produce all these samples for free. So another thing is, is with a lot of these samples, even though it's not what you're going to produce style-wise, style you still have to pay for them. It's not terribly expensive. I think when we ran the numbers to get samples from a lot of different companies, it's like 500 bucks, right? So it's not a lot of money. We're getting a lot of different items to choose from, but this one manufacturer, they're willing to do it for free, which is fantastic because we already like them. Like some of the stuff that they have given us of items that they're already producing look really good. The quality looks really good, but we need to become a priority. And a lot of times if you're not exchanging money, you're not a priority. And so we got to get on their priority list list. They kind of refu they're refusing to take money at this point because they're like, that's just not how we roll. Like we want to give you the samples first to make sure you like it and then we'll do it. But part of us is like, yeah, but we want to become a priority. We think we really want to work with you, but we got to get these samples first because this is the process. Um, with that, we also tried getting a meeting with the owner last week, but he wasn't feeling well, so he wasn't able to make it. He apologized, hoping to meet him this week so we can move that forward. Because again, part of this, and I think back to my original, if you watch my original video about brand vision is it in company cultures, it's, it's all about relationships. And my other company is the same thing. Like you have to have the relationships there first. If you don't have the relationships there, everything else falls apart. 
So not only is the relationship important with my internal team that I'm working with, but also everybody else, uh, including your manufacturers or like partners that you're working with. And so to be able to hopefully get the owner on the, the phone this week and start building that relationship, showing him that, yeah, we are trying to do this. Is there any guarantees that I'm gonna be able to move 4,500 products a year, which is my initial first goal for the first year? I have no idea. That is the goal. That's what we're trying to trying to achieve. That breaks down to about 12 sales a day. 12, 12, 12, 12 sales a day, which isn't really a lot, but that's what we're trying to do. But 4,500 products over a year is more than just a couple hundred on the initial run. So hopefully we can help architect that with him. Architect, that's not the right word. <laughs> hopefully we can help explain that and build, you know, and help him understand what we what our goals are. And honestly, anything is really possible if you really just work the process backwards. So with all that being said, we are getting there, a couple of hangups. Hopefully though, this week we, are, we put some deadlines on them like, hey, we wanna do this. We're willing to pay you, but we need these things by Thursday of this week. So I'm actually hoping to have some of those things this week so we can see from them. I think they're gonna be great. We already have some other samples that they basically just gave us pro bono. Like here's some other garments that we're already producing and roughly the size measurements that you wanted so you can check them out. Um, and yeah, so I don't have anything physically in my hand yet because we're waiting to get everything from everybody so we can save on shipping for just one parcel as opposed to multiples. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I should actually have physical items in my hands that I can show you. Some of them, which I actually will probably want to wear myself because I'll be excited about it. So, uh, because they're producing it pretty close to what we actually want to produce. And so I, um, so it'll be kind of the first run, but it should be good. And I can actually show you that this isn't, I'm not just making all this up. I am actually trying to get stuff produced. So with that being said, if you think these are the worst videos in the world, leave a comment below. Tell me why you hate my motorcycle. Tell me why you hate my hair, my glasses, my face, whatever, why this is the worst YouTube channel in the world. Leave those comments below. Hit the subscribe button, like button, the notification bell, because it's all free. It doesn't cost you anything, and it just helps the channel, so help a person out. Also, I've gotten a few comments and direct email messages from a few, few other people in the industry that are actually excited about this and what we're trying to do. So thank you to both of you. You know who you are. I've emailed you back. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm looking forward to connecting with both of you. And until next time, stay safe out there.